Psalm chapter 119, verse 81. And if your Bible has the Hebrew lettering, alphabet, we're under Kaf. C A P H, Kaf. My soul, the eternal part of us, fainteth for thy salvation. Longing, the desire. And the more I grow in the mo Lord, and the more I want to go home. You know, I'm an active street preacher. I'm an active witness. And I try to do right for the Lord. And I'll tell you today, especially the biggest frustration are Christians. I got to the point today, I was even thinking, you know, we can't say vengeance is mine. God will repay. And I can't pray for a Christian that's become an enemy. I want to go home. I mean, I can put up with the world fighting and the world angry with Jesus and the world hating Christians. The Bible says it. But when we're supposed to be brethren, we're supposed to be saved, and we're supposed to be helping each other out. And when I try to help a Christian where one who has is, is failed in in a perverted Bible, and they don't want to have anything to do with you. And another one, you know, you open up your mouth and you lie and you proclaim, well, that's what I was taught and that's not what the Bible says. My soul that's going to be with God one day is like, let's just get this over with and go on. I'm saved, I know it. But I hope in thy word. I got to the point today, I couldn't even read the Bible. And that's not me. When I said I'm going to read the Bible, just, you know, got too hot and I made up excuses. and That's not right. And the writer of the Psalms 119, it's the word, it's the word, it's the word. I'm being lied to as a Christian. By a person I shouldn't be lied to. I'm frustrated. I'm tired. My eyes fail for thy word. Saying, when wilt thou comfort me? I don't, you know what he's saying? Like I said today, I, I don't even want to look at the, I don't even want to look at the word. God, when are you going to send comfort? All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Even Paul said to the church, If I become your enemy, and I know the verses, if I become the enemy because I told you the truth, and I know it. And I've come to know when, when I read those verses like Paul, and I've not suffered as much as Paul. I mean, I've never been stoned. And I get hassles from the church and I get hassles from other Christians. That does something to you. I can't imagine Paul going up to a church that he loved and cared and prayed about and they're angry with him because he brought the truth. For I am become like a bottle in the smoke. Now, when you read the Bible, you're going to read the Bible as American. And you can't read the Bible in American because it's Hebrew and Greek. It's a leather skin bottle that dries up and parches when it's dry. It's like you do with meat. You're smoking a bottle a leather skin. And there's no you. Now I'm telling you, Psalms 119, 81 to 88, man, speaks to me today personally. And yet I know God's using me. And yet the Christian won't use me. 
because they fear. Uh, there's no, I'm not going to take over nothing. And he's got strange doctors. Well, so do you. The doctors that you believe that I don't believe, well, they're, they're strange to me. Yet do I not forget thy statue. I'm going to still keep going with the word. I'm still doing the word of God tonight. How many are the days of thy servant? Lord, how long do I got? When's this over? When will thou execute judgment on them that persecute me? And it's sorry because of a student at the Bible that I have, and I am. I know these Christians are going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ, and they're going to be shocked. That what they think is right and what they believe is right is going to be wood, hay, or stubble is going to be added. And more so the pastors that teach them to continue to be wrong in the doctrine and in the Bible. That's troubling. That's why I don't forget the word. Listen, Jesus told Paul, why persecute thou me? Now, Paul was unsaved at that point. And Paul was persecuting the church. Yes. What do you think the reaction was with the ones that persecuted Paul, the Christian? We know what, what happens to the Christians Jesus Christ takes personally. And can you imagine when a Christian attacks another Christian? And I've had it my entire life. I've been a Bible-believing, King James honoring, servant and warrior of God, and I've been tried, I've been tried to be taken down by Christians. I have been left, I have been abandoned, I have been lied about. Forsaken, consider an odd ball when, when theirs are with, uh, the oddest ball of all oddest ball. And it's sorry for somebody who has studied the word of God to see they're going to stand before the same Jesus Christ. And if I am correct, and I believe I am, and I'm wrong on other accounts, I would have wood, hay, or stubble too. But they're going to stand at fault. Where today they stand, oh, I'm the one that's correct. And if you fall off the wagon of serving the Lord, I ain't getting off the wagon for you. I'm going to get on that wagon. I'm going to head to Jesus Christ. And if you're reaching out, you want to get on, you have I'll pull you on. But you're not pulling me off. Psalms 119, verse 85. The proud. Now, I have read the Bible at least since 2000, all the way through one. And I could be wrong. But I don't think I've ever seen a place in the Bible where it says pride or proud to be good. I believe pride and proud in the Bible are sin. I'm proud to be American. I believe that's a sin and you're going to stand against it. I'm proud to be your sinner. And if we confess our sins, he's faithful enough to faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. When a Christian is proud and has pride, he sinned. That plain and simple. Why is it evil for an unsaved person, but it's not evil for a Christian? Because you do it. And you want God to to be liking your sin, so you put another classification on it, and you've sinned. The proud have dig pits, plural, for me, which are not after thy law. 
They're trying to track me. They're trying to ensnare me. They're trying to catch me. And as I said, the proud, the pride, that can also be Christian. That could be unsaved. And that could be the saved. And as far as where we're in Psalms, the Old Testament, he says the law, they're not following. And he's writing to us to say, you know what? These are people who are supposed to know the law. And what's the whole life story of the priests, the Sadducees, and the scribes, and the Pharisees going after Jesus, and they know what the law says, and they still violated the law to crucify him? And it's a shame when somebody is supposed to know the scriptures, whether they have just the law and the prophets, or they have the entire 66 books of the Bible, that they are set in traps. They're trying to tr trick you. They're trying to deceive you. They're trying to... And the Bible says for them, as well as it says for us and me, it's wrong. And I don't know why there are Christians out there when the Bible says wrong, they think it's okay for them. I guess they don't know the law. Because they don't read the law. They don't study to show thyself or prove unto God. And then some maybe don't even read the proper word of God. Woe to you that discourages another Christian. You better repent and get it right. All thy commandments are faithful, honest, and true. All of them. There is not a commandment that God has commanded that's a lie. Because our God doesn't lie. And Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth. Faithful means true and honest. When you got a faithful spouse, she's been true and honest to you. And there are people who buy these stupid things. Oh, I got faith, and they hang the faith on their doors and on their on their walls, and and get faith stickers and all that. And they're not being true, and they're not being honest with God. And they're liars and deceivers. Faith is not something you can buy in a store and hang it up with a nail or screw. Faith is a character. Faith in God is, I know God is true to what he has said. I know God is true to his character. And I'm going to believe it. That's faith. They persecute me wrongfully. Help thou me. And living the Christian life right will get you persecution. Being a true disciple of Jesus, Jesus said, If a man hate not his wife, his children, his family, even his own self, he cannot be my disciple. Again, Paul says, All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Have I not become your enemy because I've told you the truth? Marvel not if the world hates you. Christian will be proud and high-minded and lovers of self. Look how rich we are, God. Look how wonderful we are. Look how great we are, Lord. And when I look at a church that gives more money to junk than they do for missionaries, I know where your heart is. Not in the Lord. And he says, help me. Help thou me. David is an example of, of persecution by his own people, Saul, King Saul. But <coughs> by his own family, his own children. Jesus Christ is the prime example. His own nation. He came unto his own and his own received them not. They had almost consumed me upon the earth. Almost. Uh, I was almost done. I almost quit. 
Almost died. Almost gave up my life. Almost. Thank God for almost. Except in the way of salvation. You say, what are you saying? I believe Felix said, almost for saying me to be a Christian. That was a terrible almost. That's an almost that drove that man to hell, probably. This almost is, I just almost gave it up. But what did the psalmist do in Psalms 119? The word, the word, the word, the word, the word. And the devil just said to me today, no word, no word, no word. Imagine how you study and, and try to live the Bible and how the Bible comes up to what goes on presently. Quicken me, make alive. After thy loving kindness, make me alive, because Lord, I almost finished. Today it almost consumed me upon the earth, but I forsook not thy precepts and quicken me. Lord, they almost, that's it. It was almost done. I almost threw in a towel. Lord, I need you to make me alive again. I'm still in the word. And whatever the, the troubles and problems I had today, whatever anger, I did not sin. And I am back in the word. And that pleases God. Now, that may not stop the troubles. That may not stop the tribulation. That may not stop the pits. But God is pleased. So shall I keep thy testimonies of thy mouth. Psalm 89, we got Lamid. Lamid. Forever. How long? Eternally. O Lord, Jehovah, thy word is settled in heaven. Where's, God, where's God's word? It's in heaven. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. And when he's talking about the heaven, he's talking about the first and second heavens. He's not talking about the third heaven. Right now in heaven, where the angels are, where God is, where Jesus is, where the four and twenty-four elders are, where the cherubim are, where the souls of Christians have, have passed from this world unto to be with Christ. Somewhere up there, there's the Word of God. All 66 books of the Bible and no more and no less. And it's complete, and I believe it's the King James only. Followed by the Geneva Bible and the roots of the King James Bible. It has not been added and has not been subtracted. And woe be to you that have a Bible that's been added and subtracted. Because when you go check that Bible in heaven, you're going to see it's not going to match your modern version. I thank God today that God sent a Christian and he's growing, he's, 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 he's loving the Lord and he, and he takes, I mean, I needed that. I'm glad the Lord sent him me with the two people I've dealt with today. I needed that guy. And he has a problem with the King, well, he doesn't, he doesn't have a problem with the King James. He just likes the King James in a, in a modern version. And the Lord can use that with him. And I believe the Lord is going to give him the an answer, and I believe he's going to follow the suit. But when you realize that there is one word, one God, one Savior, one Spirit, one Lord, one Jesus, there's got to be one word, and it's in heaven today, right now. And it's always been. There's been a copy of Revelation in heaven before Revelation was ever shown to John. Remember, God writes history from the future back. The foreknowledge of God. Thy faithfulness, thy trueness, thy rightness is unto all generations. And that could be forever too. Because there will be generations of generations in new heavens, new earth, and new Jerusalem. 
So along with God's word and God's faithfulness, it's all eternal. Thou, God, has established the earth and abided. The earth is here right now because of God's faithfulness. God drowned it out with ice, Genesis 1-1 one, one, Genesis 1-2. God drowned it out with the great flood of Noah. And yet the earth one day, Peter says, is going to burn up with a fervent heat, fervent fire. And we're going to get a new heaven and a new earth. They continue this day according to thy ordinance. What's the day? The earth and his faithfulness and the word. You're not ever going to have one day. You're going to get up. And you're going to open up the blinds in your bedroom. And you're never going to have a day where the sun comes up in the west. Because God is ordained for the sun to come up in the east. And the sun does come up in the west. You're looking in the wrong direction. For all thy servants. They continue this day according to thy ordinance for all thy servants. God has given the sun for men. He maketh the rain on the just and the unjust. Unless thy law had been my delight, plural, I should have then I should then have perished in my affliction. You know, God? If it wasn't for the word of God and all the harassment I get from the unsaved and all the harassment I get from the saved, if it wasn't for your word, that's a statement that the, that the psalm is making. You know what? You can be persecuted by the saved and be persecuted by the unsaved to the point, you know what? Except for the word of God, you know why the people in Fox's Book of Martyrs had, had stood the time? Because of the word of God. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. I feel sorry for people who don't try to memorize scripture. I'm just memorizing now. Uh, Philippians 1, 23 and 24. I, I am in straight but text too. I am in desire to be with, with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to buy in the flesh is more needful for you. I'm still getting that down pack. Next one I'm going to try to learn is the one in, in Job. I'm 51 years old. I have a problem with memory, but I'm still trying to memorize scripture. I can't do it as quick as I used to when I was in school, but I'm trying. And God can use that. I will never forget thy precept. You say, well, what if you get all timers? I've heard some miraculous stories of all time patients, all timers, who could not remember their family sadly, cannot remember their past that sadly. But I've heard someone where you put them at a piano, and with their memory gone, they can sit down at that piano and play all time hymns. Or they can sit in a congregation and not maybe not play the piano, or they can sing the words without a hymn. Them. I bet you some of the saints that have Alzheimer's, I bet you if they're the ones that studied the scriptures, I bet you that scripture's still in their heart. Oh, bro. I'll tell you one thing. Look at verse 89. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. When we get to heaven, you won't forget the word. I'd be ashamed to get to heaven and see the word of God there and you didn't read it or even try to memorize it. I am thine. Save me. 
Now, a Christian can't say that. If I am dying the Lord today, I don't need saving. I've already been saved. The Old Testament Jew, or even Gentile, he could bring the blood of the goats and oxen and all that. But if he sinned a desired sin like David done and Solomon done, in the Old Testament, yeah, you need to be saved again because you weren't born again. A Christian cannot say 94. Now, a Christian can say, I am thine, save me. Save me from the persecution and afflictions. But verses 89 to 96 is the eternal word as the subject. The afflictions is 81 to 88. You see, every time we do a Hebrew letter, we have changed the subject entirely. And we're from 88, 89 to 96. We're looking at the eternal word. And the eternal word will be the eternal salvation that is not set forth in the Old Testament like it is for us Christians. Save me, for I have sought thy precept. And what would an Old Testament Jew need to do? All right, I've sinned this sin. What animal do I bring? We got to make sure in the Day of Atonement that that high priest has done everything that he needs to do. And you take the rope off his ankles because there was no rope on his ankles. That nonsense. The wicked have waited for me to destroy me. That's the unsaved. Not only do you get problems and troubles from fellow Christians, but you've got the wicked who are trying to destroy you. And they tried to destroy Jesus. And they almost succeeded to the fact is that Jesus Christ Three days and three nights came out of that grave alive and well. That's why, the, listen, anybody can get saved. But to be a disciple is above and beyond. And if you want to be a disciple, you are marked by all people. And you will become an enemy of the world. And you will be an enemy to fellow Christians, and you'll be an enemy to churches, and you'll be enemies to the pastors of those churches, and you'll be an enemy to your family, and to your friends, and to your employers when you want to live right. But I will consider thy testimony. Notice how it's the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. I have seen an end of all perfection. I don't know what he's talking about. Because what perfection would there be on this earth? And thy commandment is exceedingly broad. And there's a lot of commandments. And yet the path of the commandments is straight and narrow. You can't deviate. James says, if I offended one point, I am guilty of all. But what is the commandments? Well, there's commandments about your neighbor's wife. There's commandments about you wanting things. There's a commandment for children. There's a commandment for days. There's a commandment for your house. There's a commandment for military duty. There's a commandment for women. There's a commandment for men. There's a commandment for children. There's a commandment of, on oxen. There's a commandment for asses. There's a commandment for the Gentiles. There's a commandment for the Jews. There's all kinds of commandments. And yet for today, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and we have commandments still today. Going all the world and preach the gospel, and that's the most commandment of Christians that has been avoided and not followed. Pray without ceasing, and that means prayer for others too, not just yourself. 
rejoice evermore, even in trials and tribulations, waiting and wanting the blessed hope and the coming of the Lord Jesus. Those are commandments for Christians. And not for salvation, but afterward faith. Monday night, Lord willing, we will move on in Psalms 119. 